as the Giants drop another series and fall to a second worst in the NL 6 and 10. I just have to say the Giants are better than this. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every Hello day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015. I've been hosting this show for over five years, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So check us out there if you have not already. Please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. And coming up on today's show, we are going to discuss the basically the giant slow start. The fact that they're 6-10, and 10, like I said, the second worst record in the National League. But no, that is not... Actually, I'm wrong. The third worst record in the National League. Uh, the Marlins, where they go now, are the worst at 3-13. and 13. What worries me a little bit about that is that they're not that bad. So they're due for getting a little bit better themselves. And then the Rockies are 4-12. and 12. That's also worse than the Giants. And then after that, the, the, the Giants, the, the third worst record in the league. And no, they're not the third worst team in the league. They're just not. And this was a series against Tampa. They lose two out of three. Um, first game, score, two to one, Rays, right? So Giants struggled again to hit in that game. Obviously, they had... The uh, tying run on third with one out in the ninth inning, and they couldn't get him in, and very frustrating. And then in the second game, Giants went bananas, and they hit five home runs, and they won eleven to two. So that's a so minus one. You know they lost by one in the in the first game, and then they won by nine in the second game. So Giants are then plus eight in the run differential department in the series, and then they lost by five. Um, nine to four in the finale. So that's a plus three run differential in the series. The Giants outscored the Rays in the series, and yet they lose two out of three. And generally speaking, I, it doesn't work. Like, obviously, all that matters is did you win the game? Did you not um, in each individual game? But when all is said and done, I mean, one thing I'm looking at the screen here, and it's like losing pitcher, Snell, ERA. 12.86 like I don't need to tell anyone that Blake Snell when all is said and done his ERA is going to be maybe 10 points lower than 12.86 like it's just not how it, indicative of how good he is so the the run differential for the Giants in this series on the season and then just looking at individual players like Blake Snell with an ERA of almost 13 like that's just not who they are and and it applies to the offense as well. But let me let me just kind of take a look at the uh, run differential on the season for San Francisco. People ask a lot, like, what is run differential? It's very simple. It's just run scored uh, minus runs allowed. And so it's basically like if the season was one giant game, what's the score? And right now the score is 69 for the Giants and 81 for their opponents. So they're losing by 12. But that's not so bad. The Marlins and the Rockies are both both in the minus 30s. Um, the Nationals are minus 14. The Phillies, right? People consider the Phillies one of the best teams in the league. They're at minus 13. Giants have a slightly better run differential than the Phillies. And the Phillies' record is 8-8. Eight and eight, And the Giants' record is 6-10. and 10. And that might seem very different. And, different. and percentage-wise, because it's so few games, each game swings the winning percentage a lot um you know giants winning percentage is 375 
um, and the Phillies is 500. And so that's a, you know, 125 point difference. But in reality, it's just two games different. Like if the Giants had just won two more games, they would have the same record as the Phillies. And if the Phillies had lost two more, they'd have the same record as the Giants. But long story short, the run differential for the Giants on the season of minus 12 has an expected record of seven and nine, which, you know, two games under 500, quote unquote, but at that point, you would just be one win away from being 500. They just haven't hit their stride, right? Like, it's just pretty obvious that they haven't hit their stride. And you've got a bunch of guys kind of whether mostly like on the offensive side, but also guys like Blake Snell and certain relievers, I guess. I mean, for like Logan Webb had a great start in this series and... Uh, Jordan Hicks has been great, but Kyle Harrison like hasn't had that great start. Maybe it happens today when he takes the mound in Miami. Um, and then Blake Snell hasn't been great. And then they had a Dalton Jeffrey start that went horribly. And then Keaton Wynn, I mean, he pitched pretty well again, but the Giants just couldn't score any runs for him. His ERA on the season is 506. So it's when I say he pitched pretty well again, but you know, two runs in five innings is pitching pretty well. You know, it's not bad at all. Um, but, you know, what did I say? The Giants' winning percentage is 375. So if I take 162 games, multiply it by a percentage of 375, comes out to 60.75 wins, right? So let's call it 61 wins. That would be a record of 61 wins, 101 losses. That's how the Giants have played so far. Like if they continued to win at the same rate, they would go 61 and 101. And that is just not who the, what at all this team is. It's just period, point blank. That would be like a freak outcome. And it would probably have to do if like a bunch of guys got hurt. That's maybe the only way that that would happen in any kind of realistic world. So what I'm trying to say is I'm just, it's 16 games and you know, I said on opening day, it's one game. You can't judge uh, 16 games. Yeah, it's a little more than one, but it's still in baseball, not enough to make grand sweeping declarations about individual players or about a team. Um, obviously, you'd prefer to be like 10 and six versus six and 10. But, um, you know, you generally want like 45, 50 games before you really can make an evaluation and then things get a lot more stable. I want to say at like 60 is, is a, is a big number. And then like more like 80, 90 until you're like really making a solid evaluation. And so I would say by the time the giants get to 60 or whatever there, they'll probably be, I mean, I would guess at least 500 and probably a little above it. That would just be my guess at this moment in time. So clearly through 16 games they're, they're playing at a 61 win pace and the trouble is like these games count and at the end of the year they have an effect on your final record but at the same time like even good teams go through 16 game stretches in which they'll be six and ten it happens all the time like I mean, looking at the Houston Astros, for example, is a good team. They're 6-11. and 11. So if the Giants lose tonight, that would be what the Astros are. And the Astros, you know, they've got Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman and Jordan Alvarez. Like, they're kind of stacked. And yet they have, a, if they have the same record as if the Giants were to go out and lose tonight to the Marlins. That's the Astros' record right now. So it happens, you know. And I just kind of feel like that's where the Giants are at. So coming up in just a minute, we're going to kind of look at more specific players to kind of to back up what I'm saying a la Blake Snell and his ERA of almost 13 for example so we'll get into specific players and why I have belief in them like what the numbers are what their career numbers are and all that in just a minute and before we do today's episode is brought to you in part by eBay Motors passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts 
For your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you in part by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person. Do you think that's true? If you if you're an everydayer, I am. I definitely am. Okay, well, yeah, I've got a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. And the best part is messing around with my friends. I can uh, charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboard show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store and Google Play. All right, as promised, we're going to get into the kind of numbers, like specific players. It's just obvious, like when you start looking at some of the specific guys that are doing whatever they're doing, that puts the Giants in the position that they're in, that they're better than this. Like you look at, like a, Matt Chapman comes to mind. If we're, When we're going to look at his offensive numbers and how he's never been below average in his whole career at, at the plate and how much below average he's been this year, and just that tells me, like, good chance he ends up not being below average again. And he's been way below average offensively overall. And so, you know, stuff like that we're going to get into. Thanks again for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day, every day or tomorrow. We're going to be breaking down this game in Miami with the Giants taking on the uh, Marlins. And it's going to be Kyle Harrison up against... Edward Cabrera, I think, making his um, regular season debut for the Marlins. I'm not sure why uh, he wasn't on the... Maybe he was injured to start the season, but yeah, we've got a regular season debut tonight for Edward Cabrera, right-handed pitcher. Reminder that you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Giants. And, by the way, it's... Locked On's NFL Mock Draft live on April 17th at 7 Eastern, so 4 Pacific, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 4 Pacific to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 4 Pacific, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. So, getting into, like, overall, I'm actually a little bit surprised by this. Overall on the season, let me make sure this is not an old tab. But the Giants' offense is like dead in the middle. When I say dead, um, people probably thought dead last. No, like right in the middle. That big game where they hit five homers, right? Like you'd prefer that they spread it out. That's what I'm saying. They outscored Tampa in the series. So like if you could have just spread it out differently, you could have won the series, swept the series. You know what I'm saying? So, um, But unfortunately, that's not how it works. But run differential, I must point out, the reason I talk about it is it's quite good at predicting records when all is said and done and perhaps even better than your actual record. So if you're six and 10, but the run differential says you should be seven and eight, then, um, or whatever, seven and nine, then 
basically you should be seven and nine. Um, moving forward, you'd expect more of that. But nonetheless, like I said, they're not even playing well, right? It's not like, oh, they're playing great. They're just getting unlucky. It's like, no, they're playing really poorly. But they've also there's also an element of bad luck in addition. So that explains the record being what it is, third worst in the league. But the Giants find themselves middle of the pack in terms of uh, fan graphs wins above replacement by their position players, which surprises me a, a little bit, honestly. Um, offensively, they've been about 4% below average, but they've been above average uh, defensively. Their kind of overall defense ranks by fan graphs 11th in baseball, and their base running by fan graphs, even though they're not a team, they've stolen now seven bases. It was deep ish into, not deep, but like many games into the season, they had zero steals. And then all of a sudden, now they have seven. So I don't know if that's, no, it's not, not even close to last. It's tied for 20th now. So they went from dead last to 20th, um, tied for 20th uh, in the span of like a week. So anyway, uh, their base running overall has ranked 11th. So that includes things like taking an extra base and not making outs on the bases. But when we look at the individual performers, this is where the rubber meets the road. And, you know, there's, I want to be clear, there's unsustainability in a positive way too, with a guy like Lamont Wade Jr. So you look at the surface numbers, he's hitting 375, 479 on base, 525 slugging, 180 weighted runs created plus like the dude's been awesome right but he's a 538 batting average on balls in play and i hate to break it to anyone who's hoping that that lasts but that won't last it's going to come down like what uh, people generally in their career have a batting average on balls in play around 300 for lamont wade it's 282 so he's actually in his career been a guy who puts up below average batting averages batting averages on balls in play and so he's at 538 now but you know the at bat quality has been good like throw numbers out the window for a middle for a minute and he's just hitting the ball hard hit a home run in tampa has had some good at bats against lefties making some nice plays in the outfield so wade doing a good job uh conforto has been good to um nick ahmed not much at the plate but generally been good defensively as i said prior to the season the one thing is the arm is not really there uh he's had some shoulder problems and so whatever the point is to get to the guys who the only real unsustainable performance that i'm seeing in a positive way is wade from that batting average on balls in play of 538 Yeah, Tyler Fitzgerald also has a ridiculous batting average on balls in play, but he hasn't played a lot, whereas Wade has played every day pretty much. But, you know, Matt Chapman, for example, has been about 25% below average offensively, hitting exactly 200, 257 on base, 369 slugging. He hit a homer, but it was against a position player in the series, so like kind of throw that one out. But literally, he has never in his life had a season in which he was below league average offensively. And right now per weighted runs created plus about 26% below average offensively. And so when all is said and done, if he can stay healthy, like if he heaven forbid broke his leg today, like maybe he would have his first below average season because he wouldn't get a chance to come back. Um, But when all is said and done, he's probably going in his career he's been 17 percent above average and right now again 26 percent below average and so moving forward expect him to be more like 17 ish percent above average we weight the more recent seasons a little more heavily and so actually you know he's been worse than that in the last few years about 10 percent above average so maybe expect him to be about 10 percent above average instead of 26 percent below average offensively hitting a lot of pop-ups uh, just like getting under, underneath the ball and also like swinging underneath pitches in general and striking out or just it's not striking out a ton about an average rate but still just not consistently kind of squaring up the baseball Jung Hoo Lee has been super unlucky too the guy's been about 20 no 20 yeah 28 percent below average at the plate but 
what I've seen is just consistent hard contact. Like he has hit into a lot of bad luck and the expected numbers back that up. They back it up for Chapman too, who has a expected weighted on base average of 331, which is good versus an actual weighted on base average of 279, which is bad. And that's a giant gap. And it's kind of the same for Jung Hoo Lee, like the overall you know, I said Chapman's been 26% below average. Jung Hoo Lee's been 28% below average. But the expected numbers for Jung Hoo Lee are above average. And so, I mean, he's just hitting like line drives that have been caught like pretty much all season, pretty consistently. Like I can count probably like almost 10 times where he's like hit the ball quite hard, like, and it just was caught and it just was bad luck. I mean, a couple of 104 mile an hour off the bat hits that weren't hits at all they were caught so i i'm just i'm op- very optimistic actually about jung hu lee i've been impressed his at bat quality and then the defense has started to i that's one of the things i'm watching closely is his defense because it's something i didn't get to see um in korea and also you know you bat more than you get chances in the field and so the more i see of him the more i'm like yeah this guy's a center fielder he's going to be good out there and the more I see of him at the plate, the more I'm like, just keep doing what you're doing and those hits are going to fall. So coming up in just a minute, we'll continue this conversation. We'll look at the pitchers and we'll discuss how there's no better time than the present for the Giants to turn things around as they go in and face a Miami team that has really struggled out of the gate. So we'll get into that in just a minute. And before we do. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our sponsors over at Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. I personally have Um, accounts kind of all over the place and I do use Yahoo Finance to put them see them all in one place and keep track um, with this incredibly easy platform Uh, for more than 25 years Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place which is super helpful if you've got accounts you know, multiple accounts. It's hard to keep track and to have it in one place is, was game changing for me. Uh, with a community community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. All right, here we go. We're going to continue just looking at how the Giants are a better team than this. Um, I kind of tweeted something out right before the game when they won 11-2 to that they're better than this and the offense guys are generally going to get to their track records and the pitching when all is said and done, the starting rotation specifically, should be one of the best in baseball. And then what do they do? They scored 11 runs and Logan Webb pitched great. And so, you know, Blake Snell's not going to have an ERA of 13 when all is said and done, it's just, I'm just not worried. And we're going to also get into some of you maybe wouldn't know this about the reigning Cy Young award winner, Blake Snell from last season, but I'm going to drop some, uh, a little nugget. That's pretty interesting about his season last year. Thanks again for making locked on giants. Your first listen every day, every dayers coming up tomorrow, breaking down Kyle Harrison in Miami and the giants offense. Hopefully, getting it going. I'm pretty sure Edward Cabrera is not exactly someone I'm thrilled about um, coming off. Is it Ed Edward? How do you spell Edward? (laughs) For some reason I'm forgetting. Um, I'm not forgetting. I got it. Uh, But yeah, he's, he's not bad. And so it's, it's kind of bad luck or something. He's made three starts in the minors. So I don't know why he was, in the minors. He's he's someone who struggled with command. So the Giants need to be patient, but also this guy gets some strikeouts and he gets ground balls. And so um 
pretty good pitcher, and that's what we will be breaking down. I mean, pretty live arm, I think. Yeah, average fastball is 96. So just kind of a typical pitcher out of Miami. Like, they, they can be tough, and the Giants have had a tough time with that team. But anyway, just a reminder, you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just uh, download the SXM app and search the word Giants. So as I was discussing, you know, I was getting into Matt Chapman, but don't even get me started on Austin Slater and Wilmer Flores even and Mike Yastrzemski. Like Wilmer Flores has been 33% below average at the plate versus last year he was, I want to say like more than 30% above, yeah, 36% above average at the plate. Um, And so what do we trust more, you know? the 454 plate appearances last year or the 39 this year i'm going you know i'll combine them both even when we combine them both what do we get 30 percent above average so it drops from 36 to 30 when you combine them both from 36 percent last year to 30 when we combine last year and this year and i don't expect him to be that good because it was kind of a career year for him but at the same time he's never been below average with the Giants offensively and hasn't been below average at all in the majors since 2015. Um, And so I'm not worried about Wilmer Flores. And then, of course, the most content, the new belt wars is the Austin Slater, Mike Yastrzemski wars. And it's just kind of the same deal. Like Yaz, he just like belt could can get like really, really cold and he looks bad. He is going to be 34 in August, so you do start to think, okay, well, there's actually a chance that some of this could be like decline, you know, like actual decline when he's he's really struggling. I mean, there's no doubt. Uh, 138 average, 242 on base, 138 slugging, which means he doesn't have an extra base hit. It is just 34 plate appearances. I disagree. A lot of people online are like, no, Yaz has been bad for years, but no, he hasn't. He's been... He's he's been solid, you know, and solid doesn't grow on trees. And Slater has not been bad. Um, He's been one of the best in baseball at a very kind of not very niche role, but like crushing left handed pitching. Yes, in fact, he has crushed left handed pitching. Some people dispute that. I I don't know how I provide numbers and they're just indisputable, Um, but it hasn't happened for him yet. Uh, But his expected numbers are dramatically better than his actual numbers. And again, it's 16 plate appearances we're talking about for Austin Slater. 16. And so, yeah, I'm not worried about Slater. Maybe a little more worried about Yastrzemski. Maybe. Because of the age. Slater is 31. Yeah, Yaz is going to be 34. He's never been great. I mean, he was great in 2020, but it was a short season. So you do start to think, "Mm." and so whether it's injuries or like continued prolonged slumps, you're going to see other guys get opportunities at some point this year. It's just, we haven't seen it yet. And Yaz is, he's better than he's been, right? He's not that bad. What we're seeing now is atrocious and he's not atrocious. There's just like, if you want to say he's atrocious, if you want to say this is like how he's been, he's been 80% below average in his career, 13% above average. And his whole career has been with the giants. Um, he's not a big batting average guy. If all you're looking at is batting average, then yeah, you're going to think he's been bad. And also you're probably not realizing that league average batting average is around 240. And so people are like, oh my God, his batting average, his career batting average is 239. So that's probably close ish to major league average. And he hits for above average power. He also runs well and plays a good right field. And so There you have it. I'm not saying like, don't ever play any young players, but I am saying he's not this bad. And on the pitching side, you know, Logan Webb made big strides towards like getting to his career numbers a little bit um, with another good start this time against the Rays. So all of a sudden his ERA is 380 when it was like close to six. Uh, Jordan Hicks ERA is one. Ryan Walker has been really good out of the pen. Keaton Wynn's been all right, I guess. Uh, Kyle Harrison, like I'm still waiting for that kind of shutdown start. He's allowed at least one homer, I think, in every one of his three starts. And so that, that'll that be a key is like, can he keep the ball in the ballpark? And if he can, he hasn't been walking guys and he's been striking people out. And so it's just kind of a matter of keeping the ball in the ballpark. 
um, and not allowing what is right now over two home runs per nine innings. And he did that last year too, over two home runs per nine innings, which is very high. It's about double the major league average, but it's also one of those numbers that takes forever to stabilize. It's very unreliable in like even years worth of data. Like you kind of just assume league average results on that uh, until you have tons of data to prove otherwise. And for Harrison, he's made, you know, he's pitched very few major league innings. So it's, we'll see. And for Snell, again, the ERA is 13 ish. This expected ERA is 3.97. Um, and for Snell, he's allowing over two and a half home runs per nine innings. And that's just not going to last in his career. It's, I mean, way lower than that. And I don't know, besides that, I just like everybody has track records and there's, there's just a lot of guys who aren't yet performing up to that track record, but track records take it from Bob Melvin. I mean, you know, he said like a week ago or so, like what gives you confidence that this offense can tur turn it around? And it like before the answer or before the question was finished being asked, he's blurred out track record and I'm a hundred percent in agreement. It's track record. You don't judge a player for like 16 plate appearances to start a season and ignore a career's worth of a major league track record. It's just, that's bad analysis. And so that's not what we're going to do here. Um, but the, you know, the, the games do count. That's the thing. And so you got to turn it around last year's giants won 10 in a row. So, Hey, go win 10 in a row and you'll be 16 and 10 and everybody will feel good. Oh, two more things. 2020 they started out eight and 16 so that would be um if they were to go two and six in their next eight games which would be you know people would be freaking out whatever but they started out eight and 16 and before that 60 game season was over they were above 500 they fell below 500 on the last day of the season the 60 game season but even the 2020 giants who started out eight and 16 were above 500 before 60 games had been reached. And so the 2020 or 2019 Nationals won the World Series, started out 19 and 31. And then lastly, the Blake Snell stat that I promised is that through his first nine starts and 45 innings of 2023 last year, he had an ERA of 540. Imagine seven more starts and we're looking at 540 ERA for Snell. There's going to be all this talk of he's just bad or whatever. He ended up winning the Cy Young Award last year. And that's how he started through nine starts. Because over his next 23, he put up an ERA of 1.20. And ended up leading the major leagues overall with an ERA of 2.25. And so it just goes to show you, even nine starts for a pitcher isn't enough to make a judgment at all. I mean, this guy, you would be very wrong if you judged him based on... His, on how his season would go if you just made an, a judgment after nine starts last year. Uh, he was quite bad. I remember in a lot of my fantasy leagues, he was being dropped, and I was picking him up because I, I believe in track record, and then I you know, had like the best pitcher in baseball after that. So there you have it. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow, breaking down this important game i mean come on just get back on track win this series at the least hopefully sweep it get on a roll here don't don't let the marlins just beat you up time to get to your track records guys so we'll be breaking that down tomorrow locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's also available on amazon fire tv in the free fire tv channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter, at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot, so thank you in advance, and thanks to everyone who's done so already. Can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Go Giants. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked On Giants.